For people from the rest of the world, Southern California holds the promise of a better life. It's a place where individuals with initiative and talent are welcome to try to make their dreams come true. I'm Pat Morrison here on PBS SoCal. Angelino is about two people in one half hour, and it's created and produced by Peter Jones, who you'll also see in here. In Los Angeles, you can be encouraged to death and wind up spinning your wheels for a lifetime but it's the indefatigable optimism that makes and remakes Los Angeles over and over again. Lisa Curry from Cedar Lake, Indiana, the hopeful queen of stand-up comedy, and from the state of Oaxaca in Mexico, Jaime Mateo, the king of mezcal, in an episode called Making It Happen. I'm glad I didn't have to like go through arranged marriages. I can like date. My parents let me do that, uh, which is cool. But uh, I don't know if I'm dating girls here or if I'm just feeding girls. I have no idea. I, uh, <laughs> been, uh, I've been going on a lot of feedings lately. Uh, <laughs> I'm Lisa Curry, and I'm a comedian. Actually, like I'm worried that the music won't be good at my funeral, so I have a Spotify playlist called Funeral Jams. <laughs> funeral Jams, that's on my computer right now. I just don't want to mess it up. The way I got into stand-up was I started Second City out here. I did improv classes with them and loved it, but still the silliness that I wasn't totally comfortable with, but I liked being funny on stage. And then the first time I did stand-up, I was like, oh, this is what I want to do forever. This is it right here. Whenever like some old person is racist, somebody's just like, yeah, you know, my grandpa, he's just, uh, grandpa's just from another time. How, how did grandpa get to this time? <laughs> Did he crawl through a wormhole to get here? I don't think so. Grandpa lived through the civil rights movement. He should know better than any of us do. Do you understand? Like, Grandpa should be explaining to us that racism is terrible. What is going on? When I was really little, my parents owned like this little biker bar, which was so fun because we got, it was just like a part of my life, like to be over there all the time and it was, well, technically illegal, but it's a small town. Nobody really cares if the kids are in the bar. Everyone's happy. Everyone's a little bit wasted. Perfect environment for children. Perfect. When I was a kid, I, I told my mom, I was like, I really want to be a bartender, which is really sad to think of now. This picture. This oh, yeah. This That's great. I don't know whose bike that is. It's just somebody's Harley that was pulled into the, into the bar. But yeah, that was my child. <laughs> Somebody's Harley who, who pulled it into the bar. Yeah, because the front door was like right over here. So they must have just, and we lived across the street from it. So they just drove into the bar because it was total lawlessness <laughs> all the time. Even when I was a teenager, like later on, if I like needed my dad for something, I would like just walk in that, that bar or any bar in the town and nobody blinked. <laughs> Where everybody no knows one, your name, right? Yeah, nobody cared. This was after our first communion. This is actually at my parents' marina. There was like a, um, an arcade room. And you're each holding a bottle of... Uh... Yeah, I've got some J&B and she has a bottle of vodka. Just totally normal eight-year-olds. It's just at home. Oh, boy. Yeah, this is me as a uh, horrifying clown. You are. Yeah, that's really scary. And knocking on a door, ringing a doorbell. And you see <laughs> little Lisa. Yeah. A friend of mine, I posted this on Facebook, and a friend of mine was in college at the time, and he said he was in the, the school library, and it came up in his Facebook feed, and he started laughing so hard he had to leave <laughs> the library because he was crying. He was like, "What? who does this to their child? <laughs> I mean, I was probably six years old there. Well, it has some effect on maybe your future. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm dating a black guy now. That's fun, huh? Right? Thanks. I deserve it. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's good. Uh, it doesn't matter. Like, that's not even a thing that matters. I just mentioned it because, like, there's always, like, one person who's like, oh, I didn't know you were into black guys. Hmm. And I'm like, yeah, hmm, I didn't know dating outside of your race was a fetish. Are you kidding me? Are you joking? And I'm into hot dudes. Like, do you have broad shoulders? Great, let's do this. Like, that's all I care about. Do you understand? Tell me about your first impressions coming to Los Angeles. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I lived in I lived in Hollywood, on Hollywood and Formosa for like three months maybe, and then there was a serial killer caught living in my building. Uh, so then I moved to Monrovia, lived with some weird surfer for a little while, then moved to Sherman Oaks, to Burbank, to Studio City, to Culver City, to West Hollywood, to here, Hollywood. <laughs> So I've lived in like every part of the city. I mean, this is my favorite so far, but this is also my first apartment that's just mine. I'm into really big guys, that's like my thing. I just, for once, I just want to feel safe. Right, ladies? Like I don't even, like I've given up on like feeling loved and supported and whatever and understood and listened to. <laughs> the minute all of us walk out of here, any woman who's alone is like, well, I might get raped tonight. Like that's just, that's reality. So fun. And even if you are with somebody, it uh, doesn't matter. Uh, you're never safe, huh? Uh, <laughs> You were, a, you were a pretty good waitress. Uh, good as in I was good at it, but also terrible because I didn't care about the people well. I don't know, like, thank God I'm not doing that anymore, but whenever somebody would say, oh, well, what do you, what do you think of um, your ravioli? And I'm like, ravioli's not great. And then they're like, well, great. Well, actually, I'm going to order it. And then there you go. 30 minutes later, they're like, I didn't like the ravioli. I'm like, well, shut up. I don't care. Like, you, I told you. I told you it wasn't gonna be good. We went over this. Your kind of humor is, you know, it, it, it's biting, but you're not mean or cruel. Oh, did you look it up? Did you we look watched it, and it's, oh. really, it's really funny, but oh, you don't yeah, seem that like, that, yeah. a, like a mean, cruel, bitter person. No, I'm not bitter at all. I think I can be mean, but it's just to, kind of just to mess with somebody, you know? I'm not really mean very often. But, I, the, but then when I am mean, it's like really bad, I think. <laughs> so yeah, I dated a really sensitive guy for a minute. Uh, he was like really into veggie shakes and had chakras and like stones and stuff. Um, and that was weird because it was like my first time dating a woman, you know, uh, it was a new experience for me. You, you can't ever just rest and like wait for somebody else to take care of things. It's so asinine. You have to have 10 different things going on at once because nine of them are gonna crumble. Nine of them are gonna go away and we'll never see the light of day. You know, so you, you have to constantly be doing things. Like I have multiple shows I'm pitching right now and I'm sure nothing's gonna happen with any of them. Like maybe one of them, you know, but you can't, if you just have one, like, so much more crushing when one thing falls through and then you start another thing. Like, it's taking so long. I mean, by then you're 60, 70, dead, you know? <laughs> So I finally got onto this basketball team, the Chicago Bulls, which I've wanted to be on for a long time. And it's part of this league in Los Angeles. It's like 24 teams, I think, or something. It's huge. And it's all women in comedy in some way or another. So it's, I think I'm the only stand-up on my team. I think. No, no. That's, oh, she went 11 years? That's not right. And oh, three seconds. You guys, you all support each other which is, uh, you know, it's all sure. competitive, but you do, yeah. you root for each other and you take care of each other. I try to. I'd love to help people out if I can. I mean, I'm not really in any position right now to do anything for anyone, but it's it's like such an awesome feeling. When, like there's, there have been things that I'm like, maybe your opportunities that come across to me that I know that I'm not a good fit for, but I know one of my friends is, and I'm like, great, you take it because this is better, this makes more sense for you. Get we in got here. so One last close. Time. Chicago Bulls. Oh, yeah. Almost got it. Sorry. Chicago. Mm -hmm. The 
things that really matter. My mom's like, is, 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 is Adam Sandler still on Saturday Night Live? You should uh, talk to him. You should see if he'll get That's my favorite him. thing. You should just call him. Call. Have you ever thought of calling Bill Murray? I'm sure he could help you. Yeah. You know what, Dad? Thank you. That's my, that hadn't yeah. occurred to me. Do you have his number? My aunt, my mom's sister's all the time. Have you thought about mailing Saturday Night Live? I'm like, oh yeah, what is it? Lorne, Lorne at Lorne SNL. Lorne's got a mail account for sure. <laughs> racist you guys are really hate racist I'm so tired of them and I understand like there's people who are more tired of racist than me but I'm the white person in this scenario so I get to be the hero we've all seen the blind side you know how this works <laughs> in a couple weeks I'm wearing my first headlining run oh yeah what yeah. is that I'm really excited just all over the east coast because I'm doing Hell Yes Fest and I'm leaving there and going to Atlanta and then up to New York and then back down what in Atlanta we're both uh, we're from the Atlanta. hanger yeah. oh yeah I just did uh, the hanger it was really a couple fun. years ago do you know Jessica Michelle and Dana no. Yes. Yeah. There, know. the three of us did a couple tours. So we did a tour like two years ago. We did a huge like national tour, and then a year and a half ago we did another one. We did the hangar. And then cool. I'm finally at a place where I'm like, well, I know that I can do this. I know that I'm talented. I feel so confident that things are gonna work out eventually. It might not be this year. It might not be in five years from now. It, but it's going to happen. Like you just keep doing the work. <laughs> Uh, that's it for me. I'm Lisa Curry. Thank you, guys. I know so many people that are like, well, yeah, I'm a comic. And I'm like, oh, cool, where do you go up? And they're like, oh, well, you know, I get up maybe like once a month. And you're like, you're not a comedian. Stop saying that. Like, you're, <laughs> you're not, we're not the same. I'm doing this every day. This is all I want to do with my life. I want to do literally nothing else. If there's something you think you could do besides performing, do that thing. And also, you're probably gonna be doing that in a few years anyway, when you decide to finally throw in the towel. So just go ahead and get a head start on it now. <laughs>
I went to the university. I am electrical engineer in Mexico. I was working at a telecommunication company. Nothing, nothing like <laughs> the salesperson. I was engineers, not talking, just more thinking and yeah, it's nothing that I say. I never in my life sell something before I'm selling my scalp. Never. My car is like my office. <laughs> so, yeah, I enjoy. I'm go everywhere, but and because it's my life. In 0 0.6 miles, exit right. I'm gonna start driving like 10, 11. If I'm going to Santa Monica first and come to Highland Park like 1 p.m., take me three hours. Yeah, if no traffic, is 20 minutes or less. Most bars when I'm selling mezcal is open at just uh, for dinner or after 5 p.m. So I can go early in the morning. Much more social face-to-face. -face. Yeah, we, geez, I think this is uh, <laughs> a no secret, but this is what, what the, what's working with sell those cars. And the, when the people listen and say, oh, this is amazing because it's, it's natural, it's organic. It's not going to expensive magazine, or, or I don't pay the, the fancy glo uh, bloggers, or I don't know what I call My doors was open little by little, but was when I'm into this the one place, never, never take me out. Really? You <laughs> Once you establish a relationship, yeah. they stay. They stay with you. Yeah. Ooh. Nice. Okay, this is going to try mezcal espadín joven from Oaxaca, Mexico. How oh, you can mix it? No, you can mix it with anything. I, I can say you can make a margarita with that. Mm -hmm. But most uh, mixologists. Looking for that is a good combination. They have his own signature. Every bar you go in, they make his own drinks, his own special drinks. Is it the same type of agave that they use for tequila? Is it the same type of agave? No, no, no. Or? The tequila is just made with one type of agave. Yeah, so the fruit fruit depends what you like. For example, I put an example. It's if you, you like pizzas, yeah. <laughs> if you're going to buy pizza in a pizza hut, or you like artisanal pizza. It's a different, it's, it is artisanal, and tequila is like Pizza Hut. A lot of people love Pizza Hut. It's other people like artisanal pizzas. So it depends, depends what, what you like. Yeah, but cheers, guys. Other question? I'm single. <laughs> No, chavo, yo soy DJ Atoy, Los Javis, el mezcal número uno. Cualquier cosa, información, Facebook, Instagram, lo yeah, pueden seguir uh, o en mis redes sociales. En las redes sociales de ambos, o en Mezcal Los Javis, estamos en Instagram, Twitter y Facebook. ¿Entonces descansa el domingo? Sí, güey. Para que le hagas la información, ¿no? Cinco, cinco, sí. Ah, sí, sí. Para que nos vayamos a echar desmadre ya. Comida gratis. ¿A dónde? ¿A dónde? En el Everson. ¿En el Everson? ¿Aquí? Okay. En el aniversario. ¿Oh, sí? Ah, sí, caigo. ¿Do you miss your family? Eh, sometimes. Sometimes, but, uh, you know, I, I find family in Los Angeles, too. So, my friends, right? Mm. Este? Cuando estábamos pequeños. <laughs> no, pues, ¿qué le pasó, güey? Era como el cisne, ¿cómo se llama? El, uh, el patito feo, güey. Que le decía y se hizo más feo. Más feo. My friends, I don't feel the time the other day. No, estábamos una chava, güey. Te conozco a ti. Le dije, no creo. Sí, sí. He visto en un bar. Le dije, sí, pero he trabajado por la playa. No, no, te he visto. Ya sé, trabajas en, la, en las perlas con tu hermano gemelo. Y yo dije, no, ma. Le dije, no, no me llamo Julio. Sí, Julio, tú eres Julio.
Angeles is something interesting because the people is involved each other. It's not say, okay, this is my culture. I don't involve with the Mexicans or the Asian or the or the white people. So I think it's every, everybody's come together. Oh, okay. He's gonna take us like anywhere. We no, want don't, to go. don't worry. We, we, we have to. We'll take care of you. Oh, man. Yeah, so no we, problem. Do we have your contact? Yeah, yeah. I she know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have, okay. I have okay awesome. What is your? Let me see. I'm so excited. I know. But I don't look need. what he just brought us—a whole bottle for ourselves. Thank you. Thank what you, are you? What you. is your bucket? Okay. Don't don't film this. Oh, Javi. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that hundred bucks. The pongo. The 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 un minuto de consagrar, ¿no? Okay. Ah, no, no, no. Tenía risa y risa el otro día. Y no le cobré, ¿eh? Uh, before I was so shy, no, I don't speak. Yeah, it's, it's, I told my life, I changed totally. Yeah, never in my life sell something before I'm selling mezcal, never. Ah, you want to sell mezcal? Un shadow, you want a drink? I want a drink. Sure. Yo voy a poner todo mezcal y le pongo esto, ¿no? Gracias. Es ready. It's like magic. Magic. Shot. Perfect. Oh man, this is so good. This is my my lifestyle. I have no other separate life. Thank you. Oh, huge. I don't feel I'm selling mezcal. Yes, I'm. I'm talking with the people, no people, my friends. I say, okay, this is my job or whatever. No, this is my life. Oh, now, a lot of us have mezcal. Mezcal is now part of the bar, like ron, like bourbon, scars, vodka, gin, tequila, and now it's coming mezcal. Cheers. Hey, thank you. And that was Angelino, created and produced by Peter Jones, who is here through a miracle of television. Hi there, Pat. Peter, as I was watching it, I was thinking another title could be Tough Crowd. These people have a really tough job of, of salesmanship. That's right. And Lisa talked very, very eloquently about what it's like to be rejected on a regular basis and to not take it so personally. Jaime, uh, when you're offering someone a shot of uh, 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 alcoholic beverage, Good opening. it's a little bit easier for him. But uh, yeah, you still have to convince people that this is uh, better than tequila. Please just give it a try. It's walking up to strangers or performing in front of strangers to try to get them to like you. And the key, even for anyone in Southern California who comes here from elsewhere, is saying no to your roots, no to maybe a cushy job that you had where you came from, even no to your family and saying, I'm willing to take a chance. How did it happen with people like this? Well, actually, in the case of uh, Jaime, he was an electrical engineer in Oaxaca, and it was a family illness that forced him to get into the mezcal sales business because that was the family business. But he was an electrical engineer. For a guy who was an electrical engineer in Oaxaca who spends all of his time <laughs> working with teeny tiny things and not talking to anybody, what a change to turn into the 
the upbeat Willie Loman of Mescal. Well, right. And I think it also helps that when he is uh, doing most of his salesmanship at a bar, people are, are friendlier and he gets over his, his shyness very quickly. How different was it to interview her with somebody who's on stage in front of people versus him who's not used to talking to people except in his role as a salesman? This is interesting because these are real people who aren't accustomed to being interviewed and it took us about a half hour, 45 minutes for each of them to feel comfortable and relaxed and really uh, open up. Even because, the performer. Even the performer, especially the performer, because you know, you're know you asking her to, to dig a little deeper than her jokes and her anecdotes based on her real life, but we were going places that she wasn't as prepared to go. But when she felt she could trust us, she opened up. And uh, Jaime, it was his English. It took him a little while to just warm up and feel comfortable. And his English got better and better. And what do you say to when your daughter says, I'm going to Hollywood to act or perform. What's the casualty rate out here for that? That's such a cliche. And yet here she is. She's committed to it. She is committed to it. And she does all her own promoting and all her own booking. And I love it that she says, you know, I haven't arrived when I would trust an agent to get me as much work as I can for myself. I like that attitude. There must be something special, and we're patting ourselves on the back, about Southern Californians that were willing to come here and take a chance and say, nope, no thanks to the cushy job or even any kind of job. No thanks to the family nest, and let's give it a go. Right. I think the weather helps, too. Well, driving around three hours a day to sell mezcal, as he said, would be how, a little Yeah, how freaky. great that, that, that Jaime figured out he, he was using Waze right, right after he first got here. I loved it. I said, my God, he, he is a real Angelino. We're all so adaptable, and that idea of throwing yourself into a high-risk, high-reward kind of business is very L.A. itself. That's Peter, true. thank you so much. You're welcome. Glad you could join us and hitch up your chair and be here. You will meet more Angelinos next time here on PBS SoCal. Póngase abusado, ya los tiempos han cambiado. Usted está muy aguitado y está bote atravesado. Antes se bailaba el swing, boogie boogie jitterbug. Pero eso ya torció y esto es lo que sucedió.